Hi, everyone. So I'm Astrid. I'm heading the research team, actually, on analytics and AI in, in Telenor Group. And for those of you that don't know Telenor, we are one of the, the biggest uh, mobile operators worldwide. We are based out of Norway, but in total we have now 180 million customers. And when we talk about perfect storm, that's really about how development of different type of technologies are now coming together, mutually reinforcing each other. And just to, to, to state the obvious, when we say perfect storm, we mean it in a positive way and, and not like the catastrophic uh, perfect storm. So I will talk a bit about the, the background into these three types of, of technologies, but I will focus most on my, of my talk on a concrete example. So IoT is maybe one of the technologies here in this mix that is not that familiar to, to everyone. And we have talked about this IoT for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. I would say that for mobile network IoT, we are just getting there now. In 2018, we launched new technologies on mobile networks on 4G for IoT. And what is different from the old version of, of IoT is that it supports a much higher number of devices. That's, that's one thing. Second thing is that it's optimized. The mobile network itself is optimized for sensor devices, which means lower data rates, and it can also offer much higher range. So it means the, the IoT device can be connected much farther away from the mobile base station. And this also means that uh, the, the devices can have a much longer battery life, and in general, making it possible to, to build a lot of new type of applications. So we call the, this technology is called the narrowband IoT, and that's IoT on 4G and, and 5G networks. And of course, what we are using these, these IoT devices for is collecting more data, instrumenting the, the physical world, sensing the, the physical world. And then I guess this one I don't really need to, to introduce to, to all of you. We all know that, that artificial intelligence, AI, benefit from huge volumes of, of data. And that's, the, that's the, the narrative behind this, this perfect storm. Because in, in our view, IoT data will be the next very big data source for IoT. And for those of you into to telecom, you also know that there is development into a new type of, of mobile network technology called 5G that are being trialed and piloted now in 2019, and that will be launched commercially in Europe in, in 2020. So it's this combination of, of technologies, IoT for collecting much higher volumes of data, 5G that can connect much more devices and with higher data volumes, and then AI for making sense of the data that is creating this perfect storm. And since I have a, a picture of the a fish farm here on, on the left. Let me just show a few examples of how you, how you can use AI and IoT for fish farming. So we are actually instrumenting now these large fish farms outside the coast of Norway with IoT sensors, sensing the, the weather conditions, etc., but also with video cameras. And two of, the, two of the most interesting applications of this type of, of video data is into one, uh, one concrete problem that can, can be solved is to detect feeding patterns and actually detect when the, when the fish, when the salmon uh, are not eating anymore and, and then close down the feeding. So you can automate the whole feeding process instead of having people watching a video and turning off the, the feeding. And the other example, which was actually a bit surprising to, to me, is to, to take technology developed for, for facial recognition for, for humans and apply it for salmon. So we're actually now able to, to predict and under, or to, to recognize individual salmons from they are born. And so what, what would you like to use that for? Well, one thing is to, to better detect and monitor how diseases spread. So you're able to actually identify individual salmons that start to, to get different type of, of diseases. 
So this is one example of how these new technologies can be applied into some quite traditional uh, industries. And we expect that this combination, IoT, 5G and AI, will create similar type of automation possibilities in a lot of different industries going forward. Uh, I will show one concrete example today, and it's, it's fun because I, I was here this morning when this new um, AI initiative in the Netherlands was, was launched, and Telenor, my, my company in Norway, took part in a very similar initiative in Norway uh, that we were part of establishing, which we call the Norwegian Open AI Lab, which is a similar collaboration with, with the big industry partners in, in Norway and the Norwegian University with the ambition to, to build AI competence in Norway and to do that through collaboration on real industry problems and data. And the project I will talk about here is actually a collaboration, uh, collaboration project between Ten Telenor, public sector, in this case a, a local municipality, and the university. And the problem is about the air quality and IoT for measuring air quality. And then you may think that the Norway doesn't really have that big problems with, uh, with bad air quality. And compared to a lot of other countries worldwide, that is true. At the same time, Telenor, we are a, a big operator also in, in Asia and in countries where air quality is a severe problem. But even in Norway, and these pictures are from, from, from some winter days in, in Norway, especially January, February, when the temperature goes below zero, there is no snow, and, and the cars have spike tires, and, and houses use wooden ovens, the air quality can be quite, quite severe also in, in Norway. So we wanted to, to run a project using IoT sensors to, to monitor air quality, but also to use machine learning to predict air quality into the future. In order to, for the municipality to be able to, to make better decisions on things like closing down certain roads, cleaning certain roads, giving information to, to the inhabitants, etc. And this is, this is actually also the first example that, that we have where we are connecting the full pipeline from IoT sensors to, to machine learning on these new, IoT, uh, these new IoT technologies. And, and that includes even an in-house uh, in group uh, creating or making the, the sensors. So the pipeline look like uh, this new type of NB IoT sensors. NB IoT on 4G networks new type of integration service to, to connect the, the devices and collect the data, a data and analytics platform and an application. First, uh, first uh, application we looked into was simple visualization of the data, and then secondly also looking into prediction of the data. So the data set or the data collected look some, somehow like, like this. Create, uh, collecting air quality data per minute. This one shows what is called PM 2.5, which is the, the, the finest uh, particle dust, uh, 2.5 micrometers. And I don't know if you, anyone can guess when this data is, is collected. Yes, so it's, it's New Year's Eve in the city center, and you can see the very big spike around, around 12 o'clock. And you can also s probably see that some, someone are starting a bit early with their celebration. So PM 2.5 is, is the most dangerous uh, pollutant for, for humans. So, and, and a level uh, above 40 microgram is, is considered quite, quite dangerous for, for, for humans. So, Visualizing this is, of course, relevant for the municipality to have a real-time view on the air quality, also for inhabitants. But for, for the prediction part, we had to include a bit uh, more of data. And this, this map shows the city of, of Trondheim, where we run this experiment, uh, and the different type of data that was, was used in this case. So the red dots, that's the public enterprise level uh, air quality 
uh, measurements, three of them in, in the city. The yellow ones are the, the new NB IoT air quality sensors. Some of them are placed on physical buildings and some of them are also placed on, on buses, buses and, and cars. And then uh, we also know that, of course, different type of data affect the air quality and how it spreads. So we have included uh, weather data, so the, the public uh, weather station, which is the, the purple dot here. And then finally, some, some data sources from the municipality. In this case, traffic data, so aggregated number of cars per hour at several locations throughout the, the city. And also data about fire ovens, so, uh, or wood ovens, and where, in which part of the city is there a higher concentration of, of wood ovens. And then it's also, so it also the, um, there is of course public forecast on, on air quality made by public authorities, Meteorological Institute in, in Norway. So the hypothesis was that we wanted to compare um, data-driven model, a machine learning model through these, to these um, official models, which are based more on traditional meteorological uh, models. So, um, we have looked into different type of, of models and trying to, to summarize a bit of the results here. Um, in general, for this problem, predicting air quality, and we looked into predicting 24 hours and 48 hours ahead of time, we, we have seen that the deep models was the best models, especially deep models with, with GRU cells. And it was especially good compared to the traditional models of predicting anomalies, predicting spikes that happen within 24 hours. For predictions further ahead, more days ahead, the meteorological uh, models were equally, uh, equally good. So uh, this, this slide shows that for, for PM10 and for PM2.5, the, the data-driven model, which is the dark blue, is significantly better than, than the light blue. And this graph actually shows both the 24-hour and the 48-hour results. So, to, to visualize it a bit better, I'm not sure if it's possible for all of you to, to see, but the yellow spikes here are the, the true measures. And what we wanted to, to predict is the time intervals when, when the air quality is above this, this 40 microgram uh, limit, which is considered a dangerous uh, or severe level of, of air quality pollution. So, and the, the blue line is the, the data-driven model with the green one, the meteorological model. And, and you can see actually only from, from this slide that the, the data-driven model is significantly better. <coughs> One thing is to, to be able to, to predict the periods with high, uh, high uh, pollution, but also the, the, the meteorological models has much more false positives. So predicting spikes that are not really in, in the data. So the, the hypothesis that data-driven models are better suited for this type of prediction task has been, uh, has been strengthened. At the same time, I think this, this project has given a lot of, of insights also into what are the important uh, challenges going forward with this type of, of data. And to try to, to summarize a bit this, this whole area of, of IoT and a AI, of course, two key problems here is generic prediction and anomaly detection. The very uh, interesting research topic from our side is to, to look into transfer learning and auto machine learning for these type of, of, uh, of task. That means both taking a model that has been developed in one city and transfer it to another city, but also to completely new domains, collecting sensor, with sensor data from other type of, of data. And then another very key uh, element into this is data reliability. And we see that cheap sensors have much less, um, much, much lower data quality than, than the more expensive uh, equipment. And the key will be to, to find the balance between cheap sensors, uh, low quality data, and, and the really expensive sensors with much higher quality. And looking into also how you can use 
higher volumes of higher volumes of sensors, more sensors to, to accommodate for the lower data quality. And of course, as we have talked a lot about in different sessions today, looking also into to model explainability. How can, how can decision makers and inhabitants actually understand the underlying reason, reasons for these, uh, these incidents of, of bad air quality? So in, in general, I believe IoT, sensor data from IoT, extremely interesting research topic on, on AI. And we have just, from our side at least, just seen the, the start of, of this. So thank you, and uh, I'm happy also to take a few questions, I, I think. Astrid, thank you very much. Any questions, please raise your hands. I've just spotted you there, gentlemen there. It feels like an auction, does it? Got you there, and then there's a bit. Uh, anybody else on this side that I can see? Just raise your hands, nice and proud. But we'll get a microphone to you. Oh, you've got one, lovely. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Salman. Uh, I'm from Grunfos, Denmark. Uh, I had a question about the air quality measures and the models that you were running. Do you show the F1 measure and also talked about false positives? but it seemed that you were predicting some continuous uh, variable, which was uh, the concentration of those. No, we, we, are, we are predicting the ability to, to detect these periods when you cross the, the 40 microgram limit. Okay, so, so it was just above limit, lower, lower than. Sorry. Above. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Raise your hands for Astrid, please. Gentlemen, just here at the front, and we'll try and come to you at the back there, thank you. Uh, hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, so you didn't find any reasons for the air quality uh, gone bad, and what are some policy decisions that you would suggest based on these predictions? Thank yeah, you. I, mean, I mean, there are different things you can do. Of course, the, the, the one action that the municipality is, is doing is, is cleaning the, the streets. And to be able to predict when the air quality level will be significant and even detailed in, in specific areas to use that to also schedule the, the cleaning of, of the city is, is of course one thing and, and also uh, at least in, in Norway cities are also looking into banning diesel cars for certain days etc and at the moment these, these type of decisions are made based on uh, data from last week. So the, the air quality was bad last week, let's ban diesel cars this week and with more real-time models, you can, you can take this action much more locally for certain areas of the city and in much more real-time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Astrid, thank you. And uh, you're here for the rest of the afternoon if anybody wants to chat to you in person. Sure, sure. Lovely. Thank you so thank much. You. Astrid Undheim there. Thank you.